Hi students, and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a fantastic week so far, staying healthy. Hi Satish, hi Eldor, Priya, Ajmal. Nice to see many students in the class. Students, uh, we are looking at an IELTS reading section today. Uh, this reading section is from our academic materials, but you could definitely see a reading uh, section three like this in the general version of the IELTS exam as well. Uh, this material, of course, is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please visit us there uh, for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com dot com on both of our websites we have lots of materials original practice exams interactive courses and HD videos to guide you and help you maximize your effort your time and your scores uh, this is our academic IELTS website here at aehelp.com you can click that big red button to join us there uh, we help hundreds if not thousands of students every single month to improve their IELTS scores. Uh, this is our general IELTS website here with the green background. You can click that big red button to join us there. Uh, Murat Khan, Carolina, Nick Hill, uh, welcome members. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Sammy. Nice to see a lot of our regular students as well. And we are doing reading again. If you have questions, uh, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, if you'd like to get our exam books uh, in hard copy, you can also do that. Go on Amazon, search for A Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS. You can find us on Amazon Books as well for your Kindle or, again, as a hard copy. Uh, very important announcement. So um, we have classes tomorrow as well. We'll have speaking part two and three. And then uh, I will be away on holiday from the 21st until the 30th. So um, after tomorrow's class, the next, or classes, the next one will be on December 1st. So just make note of that. Uh, of course, our schedule is always on our YouTube channel as well in the community posts. Uh, we will have new videos coming for you during that time. So uh, you can uh, definitely learn lots while I'm away on holiday. Okay, everyone, so uh, here we go. This is our reading passage uh, for today. This is coming out of our first exam book, our second test, and it's passage three, and uh, we have the title, Animals of Different Stripes. Uh, stripe is what you see here. It's like this uh, black coloring in the beautiful... Uh, orange brownie fur of this magnificent uh, tiger that we see here. Okay. Um, there is no time restriction on our website, Omniscient. It's um, a one-time uh, cost for lifetime access. So there's no time restriction. Okay. All right. So here um, we have this passage. Anytime you get a picture in your IELTS reading, definitely look at it carefully. Uh, the picture contains a lot of information. Uh, you have these nice, big, sharp canine teeth on this tiger. It's obviously a meat eater. Um, it's having a nice, big yawn in this picture. So look at the picture, absorb it, think about it. Uh, think about what the passage is going to be about. So when you see this picture uh, and you read this title, Animals of Different Stripes, what do you think um, this passage will be about? Yeah, Z, some of the passages do include pictures. Not always, but some exams, some passages will include some pictures to help you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, when you see this, um, what comes to mind? So when you look at the picture and read the title, 
ask yourself, what is this passage about? Why does the author write about this? How will the author present this information? What do I know about this topic? So these are the questions that you should be asking yourself. Okay. All right. Um, Zishan, you can find a, um, a speaking partner on our website. Okay. All right. So Carolina says that probably this passage will include some information about felines and their habitats. Anas says maybe some different kinds of species of tigers around the world uh, with different appearance of stripes. Anas, that's really clever. Okay, absolutely. Um, Nick Hill says maybe the types of tigers and their habitats. Yeah, there's quite a few different kinds of tigers out there. I was um, at one of the big zoos here in Europe not so long ago, and I think I saw about five different kinds of tigers. I was very impressed. Uh, Nick Hill, um, types of tigers' habitats. Yeah, Priya, animals with different stripes, their characteristics, their nature. Uh, Amrita says their habitats and their surroundings. Okay, so about different types of tigers, their habitats, and their surroundings. Okay, uh, maybe also their habits, what they eat, how they live, how they reproduce. Okay, what do you know about tigers? So what kind of information do you know about tigers? And why does the author discuss tigers? Why, why do you think um, uh, somebody would be interested in writing some information about tigers for you to read? Okay. What kind of tigers are you familiar with? Okay, Priya says maybe because they're a symbol of bravery. Uh, Stuti says they have sharp canines. Uh, Rashika says they're large predators. Raghav, very good. Um, Carolina, very good. One after the other. Right on. Raghav, Carolina, you're on the same mental wavelength today. Uh, both Raghav and Carolina says they're endangered species. Okay. Yeah, they're in danger. There's not many of them. They're large, beautiful predators. Absolutely. Predator is an animal that hunts uh, its food. Okay. Uh, never give up. I love your answer. Never give up says because tigers are the boss. Yeah, very good. Um, by the way, the saying is that uh, lions are the king of the animals. But I agree, tigers are definitely, if lions are the kings of the animals, tigers are the boss. I agree with you. Awesome. Like that. Okay, cool. So uh, we're getting lots of ideas here, which is fantastic. Uh, now that we have some good ideas, our brain is really chewing over this information. Uh, we're going to look at the questions and see if we can get a little bit more information, a little bit more help. Now, with the questions, do not get stuck on them. Do not look for keywords. Do not underline words. Do not read them slowly, okay? Read them quickly just to get a general idea before you read the passage. It's very important. A lot of students do not use the right strategy for uh, looking at the questions before the passage. So uh, let me give you a tip on this, okay? So looking at questions uh, before reading the passage. Uh, just read them quickly. Only uh, questions 
that have information which is uh, definitely in the passage, okay? Uh, to get a general idea and some more insight on the content, okay? Uh, here are the do nots, okay? So do not uh, do not read questions slowly before the passage, trying to understand every word. Uh, do not underline key words because there is paraphrasing and you will likely not find these anyway. Okay. Um, do not read questions that have false or extra information like true, false, not given or multiple choice question answers. Okay. All right, um, everybody clear on that? Okay, so um, everybody clear on these points? Uh, I've, I often see uh, students doing this. I often see students like slowly reading each question and being like, what's that word? Um, you might not even need to know that word, okay? So don't read them slowly, okay? That's wasting time, all right? Um, don't underline key words. It's not an effective strategy. It breaks your pacing. You might not even see those words. Why would you underline a date? You're going to match it anyway. Okay. All right. I see some thumbs up and some um, hang tens going in there in the chat. That's great. Okay. Um, don't read information that you might not need anyway. That's going to confuse you and lead to more wrong answers. Okay. Um, don't just skim and scan either, uh, Sammy, that's right. But just uh, when you're reading the questions, just read them nice and fast. So here, I'll give you some examples, okay? Um, this, this first question about tigers says, classify the following facts as applying to Bengal tigers or Siberian tigers. Okay, so I have two types of tigers here. From this question, I can clearly tell this is classifying information that the passage is going to be about Bengal tigers uh, in Bangladesh, Bhutan, India. Um, it's going to be about Siberian tigers in Siberia. And obviously all of this information is going to be somewhere in the passage. Okay, so I'm going to read these. And I'm going to read them nice and fast, not just skimming and scanning. That's right, uh, Sammy. Um, but I'm not going to stop at difficult words. So this is a reading class. So read with me, everyone. Okay, so read and follow with me. If you can, read aloud so you can hear yourself. All right. Okay. All right. So lives further from the equator. If I don't know the word equator, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to try to think about that or figure it out, just leave it, forget about it. Don't worry about it right now, okay? There might be more information to help you. Don't underline the word equator. Don't be like, oh, okay, that word, that, I'm gonna skim read for that. Um, I don't actually think that word is in this passage, by the way. Uh, so if you underline this word, you're wasting time and focus because the word is not in the passage. Um, so here, just read them nice and fast. Has a significantly higher population, exhibits large size fluctuations depending on geography, grows no additional fur during different seasons. Always pay attention to negative words like no, okay? Uh, lives in a climate with large temperature fluctuations. All right, super. So I read these ones. I have a better idea. Obviously, the passage will talk about where these tigers live, um, what they look like, their fur, okay? All right, now here I have a yes, no, not given. Like I just said, we don't 
pay attention to this before the passage because we don't know which ones are yes, we don't know which ones are no, we don't know which ones are not given. Then we have a complete each sentence. So this obviously is all in the passage. Okay. Um, so humans are not a part of the tiger's regular something. While not common, the Bengal tiger will resort to something humans, especially if they are unable to process the flesh of other animals. Attacks by Bengals are often committed in defense of the tiger's something. Thank you, Atul. Okay, um, so good. Uh, Faisal says, do we need to answer only from the passage? For example, I know where the equator is. So technically, Bengal tigers are closer to the equator. Do we still need the passage for this type of answer? Yes, Faisal, you should read the passage. But of course, using your own knowledge to know that Bengals are likely closer to the equator. That's great. That's a free point. Okay, so that's fantastic. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, you can answer a lot of questions in reading and in listening from your own knowledge, but you have to be really careful. Okay. So yes, there's that chance for sure. All right. So let's do this now that we read the questions. Uh, now that we um, looked at the answers, we're going to uh, read the passage. You have to read the passage. Especially especially if you want to get like a band eight or a band nine, going to get a high band score. Um, Anas, yeah, the passage is always factual. Okay, that was a really good question by Anas just now. So Anas is asking, is the passage always telling the truth? Yes, it is. But Anas, as you know, sometimes there are different... Uh, opinions about what is true, um, IELTS tries to be as scientific as possible, okay, or as, as real as possible as to their best of their knowledge. So yes, they're going to give you the truth, but be careful because maybe what IELTS thinks is true is not the same thing that your grade nine uh, physics teacher taught you to be true, okay? So be careful, right? Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's uh, read this together and let's visualize, okay? All right, um, here we go. The Siberian and Bengal tigers are two of the most well-known types of tigers. These tigers are very similar. In fact, they come from the same species, but they do have some important differences. The similarities and differences, while interesting to note, are vital pieces of information for the people in charge of the conservation of endangered species of tigers. Wildlife conservationists have to tell the difference between the two in order to keep accurate counts of the respective populations. Okay, so now we know why the author is talking about these tigers, because people who protect these tigers and who uh, keep count of how many of these tigers exist in the world um, of different types, they have to know how to differentiate them. Okay. All right. The first main difference between the two tigers is the location of their habitats. The Siberian tiger today lives only in the far northeast part of Russia called Siberia although it used to live as far west as Western Asia and as far east as parts of Alaska. One of the main reasons tigers do not live in China anymore is due to widespread illegal hunting there in the past. Okay, so everybody visualizing the Siberian tiger in Siberia, not in China, not in Alaska. Bengal tigers live in a warmer, more southern climate. They reside mostly in India, but also in Bangladesh, Nepal, and Bhutan. Bengal tigers are the most numerous of all tigers, with approximately 1,800 living in the wild worldwide. Siberian tigers, conversely, number only about two to 300 in their natural habitats. 
Both tigers are extremely popular zoo exhibits, which further contributes to the low numbers of both, especially the Siberian tiger. There have been efforts to breed Siberian tigers in captivity, and many of these efforts have been successful. However, the offspring are unfit to live in the wild. At the very least, these efforts allow zoos to maintain their exhibits without taking even more tigers out of the wild population. So here I'm focusing on the animals, where they live, the zoos, okay? All right. Siberian tigers, on average, are larger than Bengals. The average weight of a Bengal male is about 220 kilograms. While the weight of a Siberian averages slightly heavier. Amazingly, Siberian tigers can be as large as 320 kilograms. The length of these animals are also different. On average, male Siberian tigers have a nose to tail length of 3 meters, while the Bengal's length is slightly shorter. Their tail lengths, interestingly, are the same, averaging about one meter. One notable observation is that the farther north in the Bengal tiger's habitat, the larger the animals get. The average weight of a tiger in northern India is about 15 kilograms more than ones in southern India, where the average recorded weight is 220 kilograms. Okay, so you should be seeing these tigers so far. You should see the Siberian, the Bengal. You should see the size difference. You should see that they both have long tails. So uh, relatively, the Bengal tiger has a longer tail, right? Smaller body, longer tail, because both animals' tails are one meter long, but the Siberian tiger uh, seems to be much larger, okay? Uh, Dhruv Raval says, sir, the IELTS is checking IQ levels, not just language. That's right, Dhruv. Um, it is. Uh, that's why there's a general and an academic version of the exam, and both are testing your critical thinking. Yeah, definitely. It's a good observation. Okay. <clears throat> Another clear difference between the two tigers is the seasonal growth of a winter coat for the Siberian tiger. Since they live in northern Russia, which is an unforgiving climate in the winter, the ability to endure temperatures well below freezing is essential for survival. Unlike the Bengal tiger, which lives in more equatorial climates around India, where the temperatures are more or less the same year round, the Siberian lives in a climate where the temperature is degrees Celsius. Because of this, Siberians grow longer fur in the winter. For example, the fur on the Siberian's back in the summer measures about 16 millimeters, while in the winter, this length almost triples. The Bengal for such a long winter coat. Tigers share many similarities, including diet and reproduction. Being carnivorous, other animals are the food supply for both. The types of animals hunted are various due to the different regions that are home to these tigers. Bengals eat animals such as wild boar, water buffalo, and chital, while Siberian tigers eat primarily wild boar, deer, and moose. Bengals and Siberians have very similar reproduction cycles. Both tigers reach maturity around four years of age, at which time they begin their mating rituals. The females are pregnant for about 15 weeks and give birth to between one and four cubs. Each of these cubs weighs about a kilogram and will be entirely dependent on their mother for the first six months of life. After that time, they begin their learning process where they develop the skills they need to hunt and kill for survival. After two or three years, the cubs are ready to leave their mother and hunt independently. And at the age of four or five, they reach sexual maturity and so the cycle continues. So hopefully here, many of you visualized 
the little cute baby uh, tiger cub. That's just one kilogram. And then visualized as this cub gets bigger and bigger, eating those different kinds of animals. Of course, that the mother is hunting at this point. Okay. Um, and then eventually uh, being able to leave their own uh, family, their mother and their brothers and sisters, hunt on their own and then become full adults and again um, repeat the cycle. Okay. All right. Uh, one last difference between the two tigers is a significant one, especially for humans. Neither tiger hunts humans as part of their normal diet. But one of the two tigers is known to be a man-eater. The Bengal tiger, under the right circumstances, will eat humans. Bengals will attack humans in two cases. First, they will attack humans who interfere with the Bengals' hunting or feeding. Bengal mothers do not speak kindly to people when they're feeding their cubs. Also, older bangles will kill humans for food because humans are easy to eat. Unlike wild boar, for example, human skin is soft and fleshy, perfect for an old tiger with weak muscles and worn down teeth. Siberians, however, will generally not attack humans unless they feel threatened. As such, records show that bangle attacks are far more common than Siberian attacks. Okay. So we read the passage. Now we're ready to answer some questions. Uh, hopefully we can do that without looking at the passage. Okay. Um, students, in a perfect reading passage, you read the passage in about 10 minutes and you answer at least half the questions without searching the text. Okay. Uh, for Dobbs, you should try to keep the same words in the sentence completion, but if you have a slight change that makes sense, they will accept it. Okay, good question. So uh, going back to what I just said, keep this in mind, okay? So a high band candidate, uh, band seven to nine, is able to read the entire passage in 10 to 12 minutes with at least uh, 80 to 90 percent comprehension and answer 50 percent of the questions accurately without looking back at the text. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's how it works, all right? Everybody got that? So uh, that's what you're going for. When you're practicing at home, if you want a band seven to nine, you have to think about your reading in this way. It shouldn't take you more than 10 to 12 minutes to figure out or understand about 80 to 90% of the text, and then you should be able to answer 50% of the passage without looking back, okay? And Carolina says, yeah, got it, that's the goal. All right. Haru says, I'm crying. Um, all right, Haru. Chin up. Look forward, upward, and onward. Okay, uh, let's uh, do this. So let's answer these questions. So Bengal tigers, Siberian tigers, uh, use your logic, use the information, and let's do this. So uh, number 14 lives further from the equator. Uh, the equator might be new for some people. Here's the world, okay, the line goes through the center of the world is called the equator okay so this is the north hemisphere this is the south hemisphere so this lives further from the equator so which animal lives further from the equator the Bengal tiger or the Siberian tiger the correct answer is uh, B okay the Siberian tiger Okay, because the Siberian tiger lives in Siberia, in Russia, north-north uh, Russia, and that's much further from the equator than India. So the Bengal tiger lives closer. Be really careful with words like further and no, okay? Higher, lower, okay? So Siberian tigers live further. One way that you can make sure that it's correct is complete the sentence. 
Siberian tigers live further from the equator because they live in North Russia. Does that make sense? Okay, everybody's got it. So if you want to double check, complete the, complete the sentence with your choice. Okay. All right. Um, has a significantly higher population. So number 15, Bengal or Siberian, Tito, very good. Amira, very good. Ishrit, Kaur, Z, very nice. Yeah, this is A. So they're somewhere around 1,800 uh, Bengal tigers. So it's much higher. Um, what I visualized is there's basically uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, for every one Siberian. Okay, so when I read the populations and I read that uh, Siberians are about two to three hundred, as where um, Bengals are sixteen to eighteen hundred, I quickly visualized that for every one Siberian tiger, there's roughly nine uh, Bengal tigers. Did anybody see that as well? Okay, so you can always do that kind of comparison. So the brain has to be working all the way through. Okay, all right. Okay, um, exhibits large size fluctuations depending on geography. Okay, large size fluctuations, meaning that some of them are small, while some of them are bigger, depending on where they are. Is it the Bengal tiger or the Siberian tiger? The correct answer was... For number 16, A. So uh, for Dobbs, good job. Romaine, nicely done. Okay. All right, remember uh, here, um, this is uh, South India, and this is North India. So um, the passage clearly said that Bengal tigers in North India are 10 to 15% bigger than um, the Bengal tigers in South India, okay? So the more north you go, the bigger the Bengal tigers get. Um, did everybody pick that up? So they're like, I don't know, I thought 10 to 15%, but maybe 5 to 10% bigger, which is pretty big, 5 to 10% bigger. I'd rather be attacked by a Bengal in South India than North India, I guess, if I had to choose. So, okay. All right. Um, okay, good. So, uh, again, very visual, right? Visualization helps a lot. Pay attention to the details. It's not just uh, by this point, once you've read the passage and you're back at the questions, you have to really, now is when you read the questions carefully and slowly, not at the beginning, okay? So exhibits large size fluctuations depending on geography. Which ones fluctuate? Fluctuate means bigger and smaller. It's the side, or sorry, the Bengal tigers, okay? All right, number 17, grows no additional fur during different seasons. Uh, Duti Shri says uh, that's going to be A, the Bengal tiger. For Doves and Christella, Angelia, um, agree. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, it's, again, A, Bengal tigers. Uh, yeah, grow no additional fur uh, because they live in a warm place, right? Makes sense. Siberian tigers live in a place that's really cold in the winter, much warmer in the summer, so... Um, and it even said that the fur for Siberian tigers, how much longer? Anybody? So active reading, how much longer, how much longer is the fur in winter? Let's see how many of you paid attention to this. It could be a multiple choice question. Um, so for, yeah, for number 17, how much longer could the fur be for the Siberian tiger? be three times as long. Yeah, triple, very good. Okay, very good, yeah. Uh, so 16 millimeters in the summer, and then up to, I guess, uh, 45 millimeters, that would be in the 48 millimeters in the winter, okay? If anybody could tell me that, that would be great, right? So, 
48 millis in the winter. Beautiful winter coat. Okay, um, so here we go. Let's uh, keep pushing forward. And of course, Siberian tigers, uh, you get the white ones as well. It's just magnificent, those white Siberian tigers. Okay, last one for this. Uh, lives in a climate with large temperature fluctuations. So here, it's the not the size fluctuation, but it's the temperature fluctuation in the climate. Is it A or B? Siberian or Bengal? Yeah, it's B. It's Siberian. Okay. Siberian tigers uh, live in uh, Siberia, which has large temperature fluctuations. That's why their fur is either short or long, right? So that makes sense. Okay. Okay, um, so here we go with the yes, no, not given. Okay, let me make it a little bit smaller for this one. Here we go. Okay, yes, no, not given. Yes, no, not given questions. Uh, step number one is always to figure out if the information is given or not given. Okay, so it's a two-step process here. Uh, let me help you out. This is the same for true, false, not given. Okay, so... Two-step process, okay? So yes, no, not given, or eh, true, false, not given. They're kind of the same. Uh, true, false, not given. It's a two-step process. First, figure out if the information is given or not given by asking if or whether or not the information is important in the context of the passage with 700 words. Okay, second, figure out if it is uh, true or false using the information, using uh, either the information in the passage or your own knowledge and logic. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. I'll show you, all right? So here we go. We're reading a passage about tigers. Uh, both animals are primarily meat eaters. It means they're eating meat. Uh, these are carnivores. Okay. Uh, Damiano, if you don't understand the meaning of the question, it's basically a guessing game at that point. Okay. Um, first of all, both animals are primarily mostly meat eaters. Um, does that mean, you know, does, is it important? So important for a passage about tigers? especially when we're comparing them. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. So therefore, it's given. Okay. Now, it's always a good idea, even when the question seems really simple like this, it's always a good idea to go through the steps. So it's important it's given. Okay. Is it true? Is it true that uh, tigers mostly eat meat? Yes. So the answer, therefore, is Yes, and you just put a big Y uh, into your answer sheet and you'll get it correct. Okay, all right, everybody's, everybody's good on that. So everybody sees the logic uh, there. They're definitely not vegans in us. Yeah, definitely not vegans. Okay. Cool, let's go to the next one. So uh, the, the gestation period for females is about uh, four years. Gestation means pregnancy, okay? This is where you could be in trouble if you don't know this word, pregnant, okay? 
So the pregnancy or the female tigers are pregnant for about four years. Um, when we're reading about these tigers, is it important to know um, the reproduction cycle? So is the reproduction cycle important? Yeah, it's important. Okay, so yes, important. It's given. Okay. Um, is it true that the uh, females are pregnant for about four years? No, it's not. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any mammal on earth that is pregnant for four years. I don't think so. Uh, I'd be willing to bet <clears throat> that it's not. Okay. All right. Um, so that's how you do it. Okay, let's do the next one. Okay, uh, next one. Young tigers need their mother for survival during their first half year. Um, is that important to know how long um, these tigers need their mums? So this one, important in the context of tigers, their habitats, their behaviors, is it important? Uh, yes. Okay, absolutely. Uh, is it true, <clears throat> do young tigers need their mothers for survival during the first half year? So <clears throat> it's important, I would say, for sure. Okay, we remember talking about those cute little cubs. Everybody visualize those cute little one kilogram cubs. Yeah, it's true. So yes. Okay. So we have yes, no, yes. Uh, 22, killing is a rite of passage which shows a cub is ready to leave its mother. Is it important in this passage to know that killing or hunting for the cub uh, is necessary to prove that to its mother before it can leave the family? Um, important. So if I, would, if I ask this for myself, uh, my answer here might be maybe. Okay. So here's a good question. What do I do if my answer is maybe? Okay, a lot of you are saying not given, but before I get there, before I get to the not given, uh, my answer might be maybe. Okay, if my answer is maybe, there's one more question that I should ask myself. Okay, so let me show you this one. Okay. So if your answer to the first question is maybe, ask one more question. Is this too much detail for this two-page passage. And ask yourself two more questions. Did I visualize this information? Okay, it's a really important strategy. This is where you can really save some points. Okay, everybody got that? So if your answer is maybe uh, for that first question, is it important? Then ask yourself, is this too much detail? Did I visualize anything like this? Okay, and then you'll come up with the right answer. So here, um, killing is a rite of passage which shows a cub is ready. If I ask myself, is this too much detail for... Uh, a passage of two pages on comparing these two tigers, I would say maybe it is. And then if I say, well, did I visualize this? So did I see a small tiger uh, killing a rabbit and being like, look at me, mom, I'm awesome. I'm ready to see the world and adventure on my own. And mom's like, yes, you are my son. You're super fantastic. You go out there and get yourself a nice big deer. 
in your own cave. Uh, no, I didn't see anything like that, okay? And hopefully you didn't see anything like that either, okay? Because that was not in the passage, all right? So then you come up with the answer that it's not given, okay? So everybody got that, okay? If your answer is maybe for is it important, then think, is it too much detail and did I see this? All right? Rob Saul says, that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Z says, yeah, no, got that. All right, cool. Okay, so last question. Um, if a mother gives birth uh, to one to four cubs, it is common for one not to live... Uh, past six months. Is it important for the passage? Maybe. Is it too much detail for this short passage? Um, yeah. Uh, did I visualize uh, one of these poor little cute little cubs dying and being like, oh no, look at that cute little cub. There's hardly any tigers left and one of them is dead. Um, I would, I'd honestly feel sad if I read something like that. I don't remember myself feeling uh, all that sad. So again, uh, my answer here would be uh, not given, okay? So uh, yes, no, yes, not given, not given, okay? Mighty Resh says, yeah, got it. Okay, Mighty Resh, perfect. All right, last few questions. Here we go. Let's do these quickly. Uh, you don't, again, have to necessarily search the passage for this. So write your answers. Uh, yeah, for Dobbs, you definitely want to try to match the text. So here you might need to go back and see if you've got the exact word, but sometimes you you can be sure that it's the right word. Uh, when you come up with the right word, it just seems to fit, okay? So these um, uh, complete the sentences. When you have the right word, you, you, you basically know it's the right word. You're like, oh, yeah, that's the perfect fit. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, gestation, Jacob, and pregnancy. Same thing. Um, okay, number 24. Uh, actually, Jacob, I shouldn't say that. It's a little bit different. Okay. Number 24. Humans are not a part of the tiger's regular, and I saw a few... Um, People putting it up there, diet. Okay, so some of you said food, and food is kind of like, uh, well, so humans are not a part of the tiger's regular food. Um, food is kind of a word that we use for humans rather than animals. Um, if you come up with the word diet, then you're like, oh yeah, diet, that makes a lot more sense. Humans are not a part of the tiger's regular diet if you write the word food uh, you probably get it wrong um diet just makes a lot more sense okay number 25 while not common the bengal tiger will resort to something humans now because of the two i know that this here verb um and uh i can get that without um for does not attack humans, um, not kill humans. So there are very few animals besides humans that actually just attack and kill for the pleasure of killing. Um, we'll eat humans, right? So while not common, the Bengal tiger will resort to eating humans humans, especially if they are unable to process the flesh of other animals. If you finish the rest of the sentence, then you know that this is eating and not attack and not kill. Anas says, yeah, because your skin is so soft. Yeah, it's all those moisturizers in us that we're using, all those creams and soaps. We keep ourselves nice and soft, just perfect for that tiger. Um, tender. Okay. So, uh, number 26, uh, attacks by bangles are often committed in defense of the tiger's what? Tigers have what? Cubs, yeah. Um, tigers, cubs, remember the S. Plural tigers, plural cubs, okay? The apostrophe.
apostrophe is coming after the S. Cubs. Okay, C U B S. Okay, tigers, cubs, not babies. If you write babies, you get it wrong. Humans have babies, uh, tigers have cubs, uh, wolves have cubs, seals, sea lions have cubs. Okay, so um, a lot of the animals uh, that are predators on four legs, like wolves, tigers, seals, uh, have cubs, cubs. Okay, cubs. Uh, maybe some of you know bears. Bears, bears have cubs. Bear cubs. Okay, so baby bears. Bears are bear cubs. Okay, um, those are the answers, everyone. Those are my tips for today. Uh, practice that for your reading. Okay, uh, make sure to practice these strategies so that you can do them quickly and with confidence during your next IELTS exam. And I guarantee you that you'll get a better score when you follow these strategies and you focus uh, on staying the course and going through these strategies step by step uh, during your exam. But again, um, you have to practice these, okay? Jacob, you're very welcome. Sammy, you're very welcome, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with me in this class, learning English, learning logic, communication, information processing. Uh, you can do a lot more of that on our website with our materials aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS where you'll learn English, you'll learn communication, and you'll learn to increase your band scores. Check us out there, join our premium package, and hopefully I will see most of you tomorrow for speaking part two, uh, practice, speaking part three, practice, and strategy. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out from Central Europe for now. See you all later. Much love to all of you. Bye.